This video involves working with natural gas. Please do not attempt to do any of the things I've done in this video unless you have experience or have consulted a professional. This is for educational purposes, so let's get on with it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's good to have you back. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Uh, it's been a while since I've come up with a new video. Uh, but the weather's getting cold now. I'm in my garage. I'm in here an awful lot. Uh, I play a lot of music in here. Uh, I do a lot of work in here. Uh, on my car and basically any project uh, I have to do. And uh, unfortunately, the weather's colder now. And in fact, on Friday here in Buffalo, we're going to have like 28 or something inches of snow. It's going to be crazy. So what I need is a good heater in here. And I've been using a kerosene heater for many years. Um, but kerosene, you know, around here it's tough. I go over to the truck stop to get it. And uh, they don't have it now. Uh, when they did have it, the price went up to 7 I think it was 7.49 a gallon. Uh, that went up during COVID and it hasn't gone down at all. And uh, like I said the other day, I went there to get some, and they had some plastic bags on the pumps. I couldn't even get any fuel, so I said, you know, enough of this. Um, I told my buddy, my good friend about it, Tony, up in South Carolina. He's like my best friend, and he sent me a. Uh, the torpedo Mr. Heater propane heater and so I'm excited about that tomorrow but I know those heaters can be kind of loud and like I said since I do listen to music in here I'm not sure that uh, that's gonna work well with the music going but it's gonna work well working on the vehicles and working on things I don't care about the noise then you know but what I did was I got a ordered a Dynaglow natural gas heater that I want to put here which means I'm going to have to move my stereo out of the way and that's not a big deal but I think I'm going to put the heater right here but I have to run a gas line out here so that's what I'm doing I'm going to have to drill a hole in here have a gas line in now this stuff's coming tomorrow so I'll continue the video um, do some unboxing of the heaters and uh, we'll see how they work. I'm sure they're going to work fine. Uh, my plan is I would probably get the propane one going just to get this really warm and then the 30,000 BTU Dynaglow natural gas heater to kind of maintain the heat level. So we're going to go in the basement and take a look at what we have to do down there. Alright guys, so it's coming along. You can see there I have the T in there. I have an elbow and I was able to use a piece of pipe that I had removed from over there. I'll show you. It's got a plug on it now. That's where the pipes were coming from. So I removed that and I was able to use some of the parts. Whenever I don't have to go to Home Depot, it's a good thing. And so up here is the opposite side of the garage there. We've got the elbow, and we've got another piece of pipe in there. So I'm going to have to put another elbow on top and drill a hole through the wall there. And we'll come out into the garage and finish the piping there. I'm going to leak test everything. Everything's snugged up here uh, so far. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leak test it after I get everything together. Now, tomorrow the heater comes with a, it was like $24, it comes with a package with a shutoff valve that would go uh, out in the garage. It also comes with a few fittings that are going to fit into the uh, heater. 
and a flex gas line for the heater that will go from the heater to this pipe that I'm constructing here. So uh, I'll be back uh, when I complete that part of it. Alright guys, so we completed the job. We leak tested everything. Everything looks good. I'll show you the pipe going out to the garage here. I'm just going to tuck that insulation up there. I'm going to fill that around the pipe with some caulk there. And uh, I'll just give you a quick look uh, what it looks like in the garage. Here we are in the garage. And actually I might be able to get the heater above the stereo I'm thinking. But I'll just have to do some tests on that when the heater comes. But here we have our gas pipe coming out, our trap. Uh, anyone who knows anything about uh, gas piping knows that what the trap is for sediment. So as the gas comes through, if there's any particles in there, uh, theoretically it's supposed to drop to uh, drop into the bottom there. And then I gave myself a little bit of pipe and capped it uh, because that little package that I've ordered with the uh, parts that go with the heater have the valve that's got to go on there and then the fittings that go into the heater as well to hook the flex line up. So we're going to do that tomorrow. We're done for the day. We got big storm coming Friday. I said something like 28 inches here in Buffalo. So I'm just trying to get this done. Uh, not sure when the heater's coming. It's pretty amazing. Amazon's like next day. I ordered it I think last night. So it should be here. Um, probably by 7 p.m. So I'm looking forward to mounting that up and uh, and using it and saving on the uh, kerosene. And plus I won't have to go anywhere to get fuel because I already have the natural gas here. So, so that's it for today. Um, we'll get back tomorrow and continue the job. Now I appreciate you guys watching. If you can learn anything from it, that's why I enjoy doing the videos. Uh, so we'll see you tomorrow. It's November 17th, 2022. Uh, it's about 20 to 8 at night. And this is the beginning of the snowstorm that we're getting here in Buffalo. I'm in Cheektowaga, uh, somewhat near the airport. And I'm waiting for Amazon to come to deliver my wall heater. So I can get that hooked up. And I also have to go shopping. So I'm hoping that they come soon. I didn't want to leave have the package laying out here while I'm at the store uh, so I'm just waiting patiently for them to come and uh, I'll come back a little bit later and show you the progress of the snow already you can see it's starting to pile up here and it's only been five minutes since the snow started so uh, we'll be back uh, with an update shortly so it's Saturday November 19th and here's what we're looking at I was out all night shoveling and snow blowing and it's all coming back again uh, the heater never came obviously because uh, Amazon couldn't make it so who knows when that's gonna come the wall heater uh, but this is what it's looking like now I'm excited for that heater to come so I can get it hooked up so that's gonna be my next step as soon as it comes I was hoping it was here the last couple days when this started but my good friend sent me a heater that's it's just excellent I might do a separate video on the Mr. Heater uh, torpedo heater. Um, but I think using them both in tandem is going to work well in here. But the other one has worked really good. Um, but here's what we're looking at, and uh, we'll be back. All right, so it's Monday. It snowed for a few days. The heater never came on Thursday, or Friday, or Saturday, or Sunday. And it uh, did come today. You can see some of the snow on the table there. It was actually double the size of this here. I still got some work to do here, but it's all I've been doing is shoveling for days. But the heater finally came, so we're going to get inside and uh, and we're going to hook it up. All right, so here's the box that came in here. Um, this is the natural gas model. I'm excited to see how it's going to work in here in the garage here it's about 400 square feet I think I mentioned that before um, 
over here on the table we have some things ready because I am just waiting for the supply line because I bought a little kit with a shut off valve and it has the fittings uh, just easier than going to Home Depot and getting them individually so that should be coming any time now but we have some wrenches we have some pipe dope and some tape uh, it did come with a little pack of uh, some anchors and there is a battery that's going to go on the top for the electric start uh, because it does not take electricity uh, you just press the button it's similar to a grill how a grill operates and then we have the bracket here that this uh, heater hangs on so we're going to have to mount that on the wall so we're going to get over and look at the wall and the heater and I'm just kind of examining how I'm going to mount it there's the heater here uh, and there's the wall and there's my pipe so I'm just going to wait till the line comes so I can kind of size up uh, where I'm going to put it because the gas inlet is on the right side of the heater here on the bottom so we're going to have to uh, kind of size it up first and see where we're going to put it so we have our universal appliance hookup kit it's really just a bunch of uh, brass fittings there you've got a flex line they even give you a little roll of some uh, Teflon tape and of course the shutoff valve uh, for me that flex valve is, or the line is kind of short for me the flex line so I had another one laying around that's a bit longer and it has a yellow uh, protective coating on it so I think I'm going to use that one um, but we're going to get started hooking this up to the heater um, I did hang the bracket up on the wall it's real easy to do uh, where the heater hangs on and I'll show you that as well uh, so let's get to it alright so here's the bottom of the heater here and a lot of models will have you see how they have this open square here they're going to have a propane hook up there you know, I did not get the model with both hookups I'm not going to hook propane up to this I'm going to use the natural gas inlet and what we're going to use is this fitting here and you can see how it's flared on one end and uh, it's 3 8 I believe it's 3 8 that's going to go into here and then that flare is going to go to the line and I'll show you that in a second so here's the line I'm using the flex line you can see in there that that accepts the flare fitting so it makes a nice tight fitting in there so that's what the flare is for when you tighten it down it's going to seal it so you don't have to use tape on on the flared part of it so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some tape on this fitting and get it in into the inlet here and uh, we can continue here's my tape I'm going to wrap it around a few times and I'm wrapping it counterclockwise because when you screw it in to this inlet uh, it would just fall apart it would come up off so you want to make sure you the way you're turning it it's going to drive its way in and not come out of there so we got the tape on there I use a combination of tape and pipe dope for it some people prefer just the tape you know it depends what I'm doing if I'm working on the pipe piping I'll use the pipe dope but since they gave me the tape here, I might as well use it. So I don't want to go too crazy with tightening this. Because you are going into the regulator here. You don't want to cause any damage to that. So I'm just going to get it. Just snug. That's good enough right there. So now I'm going to continue with uh, maybe putting the flex line on here uh, first. That's what I did first to kind of when I hung up the bracket because uh, I needed to know where the 
if the line was going to be long enough before I adjusted where I wanted to put it because I can only put the gas line where it is now. There's some obstructions in the basement so the gas line is where it is. That's where it has to be. Uh, that's why I needed just a slightly longer flex line but everyone's situation is going to be different so just make sure you you know what I did was kind of a dry hanging of it so to speak just to see what you know where the line was going if I had enough line so I'll show you the wall now and the hanger first and uh, then I'll continue all right so here's the the hanger uh, lucky for me I didn't need to use the uh, anchors that they gave me and they gave you pretty strong screws so I went ahead and kind of uh, hung it up there by hand first uh, I wanted it as close to the gas supply as possible but not too close to my stereo that's below it um, so I hung up the hanger uh, but first I kind of, like I said, dry fit it up there and I took a marker and just marked the top, a little mark on the side, a little mark on the right side and then on the bottom. And I measured from the top to where the slots on the back of the heater are. It's about 7 inches from the top down. So that gave me kind of a good idea of where to put the hanger. So we took care of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the shutoff valve uh, on this supply pipe here, this half inch pipe that's coming in. So we're going to do that right now. We got the pipe here and I got some pipe dope I'm going to put around it. You don't want to get too crazy and end up getting some pipe dope inside your pipe. You don't have to get crazy but go around the pipe. That's good enough there. I'm going to put our shutoff valve, that's important for us to be able to turn this thing off and service it or in case of, you know, an emergency of some sort. And that has the flared uh, fitting there as well for our flex line. And again, we're just, we're not going to get crazy and over tighten this thing but we do want it snug. I don't recommend anybody do their own gas work unless you have experience and that you plan it all out and you turn the gas off certainly. And you don't want to do it if you're drinking or if you're high on pot or anything. You don't want to be doing it. Maybe if you're angry don't do it unless of course you're a handy person and doing these type of things cheer you up I'm gonna give this one more turn that should be good there I just want the valve in a position where I can easily turn it off and on that's good enough so we got that going so we're gonna go ahead and hang the heater on the wall here now I didn't show the whole process of me hanging the heater because it's fairly straightforward like I said you just measure or hold it up where on the spot you want and if you've already done your gas line it's helpful because you can shift it around see what you know spot you really want to lock it in at so I'm going to get that heater, hang it up, and, uh, and we'll continue and just hook the supply line up. It's that easy. Alright guys, so here's the back of the heater. And there's one of the slots that the, the, uh, the bracket that's hanging up is going to slide into. And here's the other slot here. So that's what we're aiming for when we're going to hang it. One more additional note. And the package is going to be these plastic uh, pegs or whatever with some screws. And that kind of keeps it maybe an inch away from the wall on the bottom. And there's one on the other side there. They just screw right in real easy.
All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing hung here. Now, as you can see, it was pretty easy, pretty easy to get hung up there. So now what we're going to do is hook our supply line up, our flex line. And as I said, you don't need to put any pipe dope on that. Uh, they're flared fittings, so they fit into each other, so they seal nicely. So I'm going to do that right now. want to over tighten these. Looks good to me. So now what we need to do is uh, we're going to turn the gas on and we're going to get a spray bottle with some soap, 50-50 mix, soap and water. We can spray them on there and check those connections. Uh, make sure we don't have any leaks. I'm going to go ahead and turn this gas on. And then what I'm going to do is take my bottle of soapy water Another method you can do is shake it up real good when it's real sudsy. Remove the top and you can just put suds on it. Squeeze the bottle and get your suds out. Then you could put the suds directly on it. And if you see this, you know, if you see it starting to blow bubbles, the bubbles getting bigger. Then you want to check your connections again, tighten them up. See, you don't see any bubbles getting bigger, so that connection looks actually good. So I'm not going to bore you with checking the other connections, but that's basically the procedure on checking for leaks. Now there is a solution they sell but I think it's a waste of money. It's probably just the same thing. It's just soap. Or you can buy a leak detector, an electronic one that you hold up and it'll beep if there's a leak. So I'm going to finish doing the leak testing and then we're going to fire this thing up. Okay, so at the top of the heater we have the dial and we have this push button starter. Uh, this just unscrews and then you put your battery in there like that. And that's what's going to start it. Now it's going to take a minute for the gas to flow through these empty lines. There's going to be a lot of air in there before the gas actually reaches the heater itself. So we're going to set this to the circle with the X and we press down. I don't know if you can hear, you can hear that. That hissing. So I'm going to hold the knob down and I'm going to periodically just press this real quick. You can hear that. And uh, we'll see how long it takes to fire it up. So there's our pilot. Our pilot's lit. It did take uh, oh, probably about 45 seconds. You have to give it time, particularly if you've just installed a new line. There's a lot of air in there. So uh, what I do is just, uh, when I press the knob, I can hear it. 
I can hear the air coming through and just uh, trying to spark that like every every once or twice uh, as you go along instead of letting the gas build up in there but you will smell the gas start to come out and then uh, the pilot will light and that's where we are now all right so we turn the knob to the left and uh, we got a flame here looks nice there's definitely a lot of heat coming out of this thing on the top I do have a ceiling fan which is going to help uh, push that heat back down you know I see a lot of people they'll put a fan above it uh, I already had the ceiling fan so that's going to work out nice but nice addition to the garage it's got you know it's like a real fireplace so it's uh, nice and relaxing throwing out some heat so I'm happy with it alright so it's been a couple hours and it's 64 in here it's about 37 outside uh, the garage is insulated as far as the walls go that was done a long time ago uh, the roof is not or the ceiling is not uh, insulated the garage door isn't insulated uh, but there are drafts that come through there as expected I do have another door that I open from time to time so running the heater you have to have ventilation <clears throat> that's very important uh, it is ventless but it does require that you uh, you know open the door every once in a while you know put open the garage door an, an inch or so just to get some uh, ventilation some air in now this is supposed to have a low oxygen safety shutoff on it uh, but I would recommend to having a uh, carbon monoxide detector in the garage so this is 400 by 400 square feet and it's doing well so far and the bonus is you get to have a nice real flame uh, so it's real cool so we're ready to listen to some tunes soon I'm gonna go uh, over to the mr. heater and give you a look at that real quick and that's what I'm gonna be using to kind of when it's real cold outside to kind of boost that temperature up very quickly and then I'll use this to maintain that temperature so here's the real awesome mr. heater 30,000 to 60,000 BTU heater it runs on propane that my buddy Tony had sent me thanks again Tony good friend he came through it was a uh, blizzarding basically all weekend and uh, he had gotten me this for Christmas and I only had maybe seven pounds of propane left in the tank you know I pulled it off the grill that I've been cooking on all summer and it lasted lasted the weekend it got this thing heated up quickly it was comfortable I was able to kind of have a shoveling station here where I was keeping warm and listen to some music and then I'd go out and shovel and just trying to keep up with the storm but thanks again Tony and uh, I do recommend this heater as well I'm going to use it kind of in tandem with the one on the wall so you know I'll, I'll get this up to temp very quickly and then I'll turn the other one on and just kind of maintain and if I need a boost every once in a while I'll come visit Mr. Heater again and he'll he'll take care of me he'll get it boosted up there uh, so it is a it is a really nice heater uh, the only thing I didn't like was just that it's it's not horribly loud but you know if you're working on your car or other things in the garage it's not a big deal but if you're just sitting out wanting to listen to some music and you know because of the square footage in here it's, it makes some noise so but it's not horrible you know, it's definitely worth uh, the noise to have it boost your heat up for you so that's my mister heater so overall I'm happy with the heater it's been about three days over the Thanksgiving holiday uh, we had all that snow um, I finally got the unit and got all the parts I needed so I was excited about it and uh, it looks great I mean the overall design of the unit is kinda I don't know industrial I guess you would say uh, they could probably market and make some other models that have like a more of a brick face to it or something fancy like that but you know for your garage it, it'll fit in nicely I really wanted the black one but 
this one I got on sale so I figure I'll just go with the white but they do it did have a black model um, but overall it's been a great unit there is a optional fan that you can buy that there's a punch out on the back of it a square that you mount that fan in and it will blow it and I don't think it's that powerful that's why I just use my ceiling fan It's probably the best option or if you have something to mount above it but you're going to have to be aware of the heat a lot of heat rises from that uh, so make sure you have your distances right so the fans not sitting in that direct line of the heat coming from that heater but overall I, I really love the heater I wouldn't have any problem working on the car in here or getting any kind of work done it's very comfortable uh, so I want to thank all the current subscribers and the new ones uh, I haven't been on in a while but I'm going to get on and start responding to comments but leave a comment below if you have a heater similar to this uh, tell me what your experience is or if you have a recommendation for other heaters um, but I appreciate uh, you viewing the channel hit like and subscribe it helps support the channel and we'll see you next time